These fish suck. Welcome again to the Trout's Reading Water Series. My name is Rick Mike Sell, and I'm here on the Denver South Platte. It's early fall. The river is quite low and really clear. It's an ideal scenario for seeing lots of feeding, tailing, happy carp in the Denver South Platte. But because it's so low and clear, they're also very wary and spooky. So I have to kind of be set up for a stealth approach. Today, we're going to approach some water. We're going to see how to set up for a fish how to present to a fish, and hopefully how to catch a few fish in the Denver South Platte, particularly common carp. Um, I'll go through some rigging here as well, show you how to set up before you get on the water, how to approach the fish, and how to get a fly in front of them, and hopefully get them to eat. So this time of year, because of the clarity, and because the fish have seen a little more pressure throughout the season, we need to focus on stealth first. So approaching the fish from a place that they can't see us, either using camouflage from trees or bridge pilings or from high banks. And if we're lucky enough, we'll get some shorter shots so we don't have to make long casts. But this time of year, long casts can be a really efficient way to get fish just because it's less likely to, for them to see you if you're further away. Knowing that we may have to make some long casts though, it's really important if you want to take this sword on that you practice your cast a ton and really reduce false casts. If I have more than two false casts as I present to a fish, it's likely he's going to see the line overhead and spook. So we need to make sure that we get to him as quick as possible without them seeing a bunch of motion up in the air. Carp don't have great focus at distance, but they have really good movement detection. So if you're throwing your hands up, making a lot of movement, especially casting a fly rod, there's a good chance they'll spook right away. So this time of year with the clarity, uh, it's really important to think about what you wear. If I had my way, I'd have a color changing shirt, one that I could press a button and it would be blue with wispy clouds. And then I'd press it again and it would be full camo like I'm wearing now. I know most of the time I'm going to be down closer to the bank, so I chose to wear the camo just so I can blend in as best as I can. Carp do have true color vision, so they can see the colors you're wearing. If you wear a bright red or a bright, bright blue or a bright white shirt, it's going to create a stark contrast with the bank or whatever side you're on and throw a little movement in there and carp are immediately going to spook. So be sure to keep it as muted as possible. So today I'm using an Orvis Helios 3D 9 foot 7 weight rod, an Able SDF 6.7 reel, and an Airflow, um, I believe this is the Stillwater taper line. I like these longer bellied lines just so I can load the rod, lo, excuse me, load the rod quickly and make a long cast. They're a little tougher to load at shorter distances, so keep that in mind if you're making lots of short shots. But when you do have to make long shots, this long belly really allows you to load the rod deep quickly and get that cast out efficiently without a bunch of extra false casts. Uh, for leader material, I'm using a seven and a half foot fluorocarbon leader. You can either buy a prepackaged seven and a half foot fluorocarbon. A lot of manufacturers are making them now. Um, I tend to build my own. So this is 60 pound to 30 pound to 20 pound. And then I'll attach another foot or so of 16 pound fluorocarbon tippet to the end to complete my leader. Uh, I've been using the Umpqua Deceiver HD saltwater fluorocarbon. It's nice and stiff, has very little memory, and it's really abrasion resistant. And with all the hazards out here, rebar, shopping carts, nasty stuff in the river, it's really good at keeping strong and not splitting. So as we consider flies this time of year, the river's really clear, so we want to avoid really bright, bold colors. This is going to sp spook fish right out of the gate. In higher water or more off-color water, bright colors, annelids, things like that are great choices. But for the clearer water like we have now, we want to focus on the primary forage, which is going to be crayfish, and more muted colors. So I tend to go in the rust brown window. Uh, Barry's carp fly is a great choice. And because I'd like a lot of weight in this game to get it down in the pocket quickly, the Umpqua Tungsten Jig Bugger in the peacock and rust color is another really good choice for this time of year. For carp fishing, you're really only using three knots. For all of your inline leader and tippet connections, blood knot, blood knot, blood knot. That's all you ever want to use. A surgeon's knot is a really poor choice of knot, especially when it's going to be tested by something as big as a carp. 
to the fly. It depends on the eye of the fly. If you're using a jigged fly like I'm using, you can just use a standard clinch knot. That's a great way to go. Or an Orvis knot. Those tight to the eye knots are great in jig presentations because they allow the jig to do what it's supposed to do and have that up and down action. If you're using a straight eyed fly like the Barry's Carp fly I just showed you, you wanna use some type of loop knot. Personally, I prefer the perfection loop. If you know the no slip mono loop or the Homer Rhodes, those are great as well. That little bit of loop will give you action on the fly and you also have 100% of the breaking strength of the material to the eye. So it's a much stronger knot overall. So I'm just gonna attach my tippet, be a simple blood knot. The blood knot is a very strong, and if you practice it, a very easy to tie knot. And if you need more information on any of these knots, on our website, we have a great animated knot guide. It's a easy way to get a mental picture of how to tie them, and then just practice, practice, practice. And after quite a few times, you'll be able to tie them no problem every time. Unless you have not had enough coffee like myself this morning. So nice and clinch a little bit of moisture. You'll know you've tied it right if you have what looks like two fists on each side and two perpendicular tag ends. And because this is a jigged fly, I'm just gonna tie a standard clinch knot. I want this heavy overbeaded tungsten bead to do all the work for me. So four wraps through the eye, nice and tight. A Davy knot or an Orvis knot are great in this as well but a clinch knot for most of us is just really easy to tie. So as I approach a spot where I think there might be fish, I wanna get ready by getting some line out of the reel, enough to at least load the rod, and definitely have my fly between, between my thumb and forefinger ready to release. Uh, it's the ready position in salt water. There's a lot of weeds around here, so I do need to make sure I maintain my line so I don't snag up when I go to cast. And slowly, Using the high bank for stealth, I'm gonna start scanning the water for fish. The light's a little tough still this morning, so I really need to do my best to look through the glare, look for movement, look for glowing scales. Fish just rolled right behind that bush. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna stay back from the high bank. I don't wanna throw a shadow and spook the fish before I even have a shot at him. Don't know if this hawk soaring overhead is gonna spook him and keep him from coming up skinny. Slowly scanning the water, looking for actively feeding fish. So as you can see, this is a big shallow flat. And this is where these fish come to feed. And there's a deep bucket back here behind me where they can you have that recipe of a shallow flat with some place to retreat nearby, that's likely where you'll find fish. Although this morning it looks like the hawk may have them in other places. It looks like the birds of prey have them spooked off the flat. Let's go try another side and see if we can find some that aren't scared. Ooh, there's some very nice fish down here. Let's see if we can get set up on them. So with the high bank, I have a little bit of stealth, but I still need to stay back if I can. Let's let one get in the zone and get set up for me. This fish is moving pretty quick. I don't think he's gonna be an eater, but we'll take a shot at him. Oh, snag down the GoPro. I cast well past the fish. I'm going to drag my fly into the water column. I'm going to let it drop. They're spookered. They are not liking us up here. Let's keep taking shots until we get one that's going to eat. Oh, we have some weeds on her. If you see them down there, they're just dancing. Um, this is an ideal behavior for carp. Let's see if we can get one to settle down and eat. So the problem I'm having right now is my fly is not getting down in front of the fish quick enough. 
So I need to change flies and get something a little heavier on. Holy cow, there are some giants in here today. Plenty of fish around. We just need to find one that's willing to eat. past the fish, bring it across the water column, let it drop right at their nose. Didn't look at it. There's another target here. Nope, no look. We got a lot of schmutz on our fly. We found some fish, which is a great thing, but all the fish were very spooky from bad casts, shadows, the hawk that was here earlier hunting prey and maybe even a little bit the drone overhead so we need to find a little bit happier fish so we have the opportunity to actually catch one once carp are spooked it's pretty difficult to convert them to eat so it's probably best to move and find some better fish so we've moved spots we did a little scouting from a high bridge and have seen plenty of happy fish um, it's a pretty open big stagnant pool so we're going to have to have lots of stealth i've switched to a much lighter fly because we don't have current to deal with there's also a lot of high floating fish. The high floating fish usually aren't the best target, but their mouths are moving, they are eating. And if we present them to them the right way, we can still potentially have shots at them. So step one is to exhaust all of our shots at the happy tailing fish that we're gonna see first. Once we've either caught those or spooked them all, we're gonna move on to the floating fish and we're just gonna work our way all the way around the sand flat until we've exhausted all of our shots. Fish cruising in at me. I'm gonna take the shot. Drag and drop. No response from him. Let's try to get a little closer. Drag and drop right off of his nose. He's following it down. Let's see if he eats. Oh, I got a stick. I didn't get him. He's still looking for it, though. May have spooked him there. Yep, I spooked him. Oh, no, he's still kind of looking. He hasn't seen me yet. Drag in the column. Let it drop slowly down right in front of the fish. Spooked him. There's another fish tailing right here. I'm going to try and get it in front of him before I spook him. Wow, that wasn't a very good shot. I need to get it closer to him. He saw it. He's moving to it. Got him. Quick strip strike. Fish is going to run. He's, we're not in current, so he's not going to pull super hard, but I'm going to keep my line as tight as possible. I'm going to reel up and clear any extra fly line and be ready to let the reel do all the work. As soon as I feel like I have a good hook set on him, I'm going to use very low rod angles. As soon as he turns completely to that apex, I'm going to pull against him. And if I use low rod angles, I have a ton of control over the head and I can continue to turn him and not let him get too much line to run and wrap me around something. The really nice thing about carp is when you're using heavy gear, they have very gummy mouths, so it's very unlikely for them to spit the hook. So you'll see with low rod angles, the fight's pretty darn quick. This is a decent sized fish. It's probably seven, maybe eight pounds, but I have a ton of control over his head by using low rod angles and as soon as he hits the apex, just giving a short turn, 
I have lots of control over the fish. He's not gonna run me into backing and have all kinds of messes. Now, when you get these fish in the current, they will get you into backing. There's nothing you can do about it. But because we're in this nice, slow, stagnant pool, I have lots of control. So just giving him lots of pressure. If he's gonna run, he's gonna run. I'm not gonna let him run here. We'll see. He's not really pulling as hard as they usually do, but still a good fight. This is a seven weight with 16 pound test. So I'm really putting the wood to him. There's a little run. And if they're gonna run a little bit, just let them run. Just let them run, just clear the line, let them run. And then immediately drop your tip, get back to fighting them. So low rod angles, as soon as he hits the apex, I turn and pull against him. The quicker you can get this fish in, the less likely you're gonna lose him. So as soon as they start gulping air, taking air on the surface, that means they're ready to come in. So there's one gulp there, there's another gulp there. They're really just filling their score, getting a little more buoyant, and they're ready to come in. So this guy's ready. With carp, you always want to land large landing net. This is a not a huge fish for the Denver South Platte, but he's still going to blow out the bag on your normal trout net. So I really like the rising lunker. I can fit all kinds of fish in it. Uh, I even have a deeper bag just so I don't have any chances of fish blowouts. And he's got a little more fight in him. He didn't really run too hard, so still got some energy. So scoop. Oh, not quite. Fish has landed, a beautiful Denver South Platte carp. Back to business. Thanks, buddy. Beautiful South Platte River, carp on the fly. I'm ready for some more. Let's go get another one. All right, I have a couple fish up here. One tailing really aggressively, but a couple a little closer. I'm always going to take my closest shot first. I don't want to spook fish to find fish. This outside fish looks like he's the biggest, so I'm going to go for him. Cast past, high in the water column, drag it, and let it flutter right in his zone. Let's see what he does. Oh, he spooked. Let's see if his buddy will eat. Don't spook your buddy. Don't spook your buddy. Past him, right in the zone, flutter. He ate, strip set, let him run. I didn't even see that fish. I was fishing for the fish in front of him. That was great. This one's a little sportier than the first one. He's putting some, putting some runs on the old Able SD. So now that he's kind of run out a little bit, I'm gonna pick up some fly line. The more control you can keep on these fish, the better. I'm still gonna to try to keep low rod angles as much as possible. Keep that rod angle low. And if he goes right, I'm gonna go left. If he goes left, I'm gonna go right. Right now he's just coming in right at me. There he goes again. Let him clear some line. And the second he's done with that run, drop your tip and pick up all that slack. These low rod angles, I have so much control over the head. I'm 
a fight with a carp should not be 15, 20 minutes. It should be just a couple. We want to keep these fish in the water, not lactic acid as long as possible. Still got a little bit in him, but he's taking some air. The big difference between this one and the previous one is happy fish. We saw those fish darting around and spooking, not interested in eating at all at the previous flat. This flat, they're all tailing, mouth moving, super happy. And you see how different of a pursuit it is when you have happy fish. He's taking in some air. Let's get him in the net. Yep. One more little run. And in the net. Get him in the sunlight. I like to keep him in the net while I de-hook just so they don't thrash around. So as you can see, stealth is the biggest part of this game. Approaching quietly, minimizing false casts, making sure that you get in the zone as quick as possible. That fish was pretty happy, so I got a second shot on him. You don't always get that, so you need to maximize that first shot. Really appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions about carp on the fly or any other sport fishing with a fly rod or otherwise, come visit us at troutsflyfishing.com or visit us in Denver and Frisco. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.